Love and self. Wow, that's a really nice starting point. Love, uh, that's a very complicated word. Um, self as well. Love and self, right. Well, love is an emotion and self is an identity. Well, <clears throat> I think love is, it's interesting because I feel like those words really interrelate because I feel like love is an expression of like a contentedness with the self. Self-love comes to mind. That's what I thought of too. You compare yourself and your values and who you are, your looks constantly to what society wants you to look like. Be it the celebrities, media's influencers, they all set standards. So loving yourself is one of the most difficult things you can do. And I think everybody says you, you need to love yourself before you can successfully have a loving relationship with another person. So I think that's true. I've not heard that. <laughs> I remember being like eye roll and saying things like, I think a little bit of self-hatred is actually very healthy. <laughs> But then, love on its own, it has a lot of um, loaded connotations, actually. Love is what makes the world go round. We all know that. It's the most important thing about being a human being. It could be like different meanings for different people. Like, it, it doesn't have to mean like one thing. It can be like a lot of types of things. Like, my dog loves me, and I love my dog, but I also love my partner, and I love my sibling. And coming from a French background, Loving and liking is very similar. So I don't see a distinction between liking and loving because both of them is je t'aime. And I think they're all mm, sort of chemical cascades uh, that happen in your body um, in response to environmental stimulus. As I get older and find my own way rather than just the way that I was surrounded with all my life, I find that I'm redefining love for myself and that love is just, it's like a magical force a uh, warm light, and a beacon for how to live your life. What is love? Unconditional. But you still need boundaries. My affection is not unconditional. If you're not going to be respectful of me... They can't just be like, free for all, woo woo woo, you know? <laughs> and self, in essence, self is like a very deep sense of belonging to everything. Self is an individual. It could be anything that has a consciousness. Everything that's, uh, <clears throat> that you are made up of, which includes all of your experiences that you've had throughout your life that's impacted you and the way you think and who you are. I am a, an amalgamation of all the people who I've met, whether I've admired them or not. Um, certain parts of them have become parts of me. So the uh, idea itself, I think, it's something that's constructed over time. I'm lucky that I'm an older person and I've had lots of life experiences and so I have a strong sense of self and a strong self-respect that I think comes from living for so long. <laughs> self is evolving for me. Like anything you want to be. Is it something that you strive to find and then you find it and then you're resolved? Or is it some continuous? I think, I think it's, it's continuous. continuous. What is normal? Well, like, heteronormative, I guess, would be one thing, right? What we think is normal in our society today is so far from being normal for a human being. It's been corrupted by so many forces, political, sociological, psychological, that maybe what is really normal is something that we don't really understand. You always compare yourself to what society wants, and that makes you loathe yourself more than love yourself. So I would say that most people are just masking themselves. Depending on your values, your beliefs, and where you are legally, the concept of love can be very restrained or very, very broad. I think love sometimes brings up fear for people, so it's a pretty tender spot. There's quite a bit of cultural references that could just be ditched, or at least understood for what they are, just like a construct around love. If by outside the norm you're referring to love involving members of the queer community, um, I, I don't think there's any difference between uh, that sort of love. I mean, it's all the same kind of love, right? It's kind of refreshing, isn't it, to think in those terms. That's one of the most interesting things about the pride movement, the new communities, is that it will topple old regimes. It will, it serves to dissolve the patriarchy. 
It makes me very happy to see different, different depictions of love being represented in media, and it makes me really happy to see, see folks who do not identify with heteronormativity expressing their love in public, because that is something that is becoming increasingly more common, because people feel more safe to do so. I think it's like definitely better in like smaller communities. Like they more like listen to other people's ideas than, than in a big space. More of a community. Yeah. There's room for a lot of different experiences, and I think people would be a lot happier and healthier in general if we could open up that experience in our society a bit and really stop trying to contain ourselves. I remember like, like our teacher. She's like, I dare you to like go one day pretending you're like someone else for like a day and see the toll it takes on you. And I mean, I didn't do it. I should probably do that though. But yeah, it would definitely like, yeah, affect you and... You'll be feeling good about yourself when someone says something and you'll just, like, just feel horrible. I would describe it as someone not using the correct name when calling you or naming you. How many times that people get offended by, let's say, a teacher or something like that, that don't remember their name, and then they're like, oh, well, my name is that. Well, that little feeling at that moment that you had to correct that person, well, imagine that, but like tenfold. And that's from the moment you realize you're trans. I felt that way since I'm three. I think gender is a construct. I feel like the world is actually full of they, thems, but it's just not a language that we're really used to yet. It's obviously something of interest in our society, and it might be part of the evolution of our society. This exploration is a really good thing. It's gone in many more diverse directions than I could ever have thought about when I was a young person. But also, I have a suspicion, and maybe this is just wrong of me, that not everybody is completely sincere in their desire to uh, be assigned to genders. I guess what they means, I don't know. I'm not sure if I really should be expected by everybody to change the way I speak, honestly. I don't mean to be disrespectful. I just find it a little bit daunting. I find it perplexing and confusing, but um, it's none of my business, really. People should be free to live their lives however they want to live their lives. Um, and uh, I would expect that sort of treatment to be a universal sort of human treatment. We should all treat each other that way. I would say that I've been out and queer for the majority of my life, uh, and I would say that it changed a lot from like 2008 to 2023, when I thought that they were like, oh, an accepting community. It was when the LGBT was mostly LGB. The T wasn't really spoken about. So it was very difficult at the time, until 2016, when the movement for the trans community came out. And I would say that's when the LGBT became a better place to actually identify than staying in the closet. I'm super jealous of folks who are able to come out now when there's more language because um, it's so liberating. It's just an exciting time to be young if you're bi or gay or, you know, because you can find a space in a community that will accept you in a, more so than when I was young, that's for sure. You know, there's those old myths about how there was a person, person who was both male and female, and then somehow, I mean, these are kind of creation stories. They split apart, and now they're still trying to get back together. I just feel like everyone's going to have to come to it naturally in their own way. I don't mean to come across as cavalier about it. I guess I'm not going to necessarily challenge people too much. I mean, I will if I feel like there's some harm being done, but also, I respect people's processes and where they're at. So maybe human beings are on a path to reconciling that. Do you feel like a lot of queer people feel safe expressing themselves in this community? I'm not queer, so I can't relate to that. At our school, I think it's pretty open, but there's still some people who have hate, so like they make fun of it sometimes as if it's like a joke. It makes me mad because it's like most of the time they, they can't relate to it either. It's usually with pronouns where it's like, People say, like, my pronouns are like dinosaur and stuff. Or, yeah, it's like, no, you're not. Um, <laughs> like, I've heard people say, someone says the pronouns are they, them. And they're like, no, they're she, her. Yeah, telling them what they are. People are always like, geez, calm down, it's just a word. But it's not just a word. I saw someone go by 
she, they on social media. And I emailed my friend and was like, this is speaking to me so deeply. Would it be totally disrespectful if I, you know, use these pronouns? And, and they were like, it's not a secret society. <laughs> I mean, if it's who you are and it expresses your identity, then yes. It felt like I needed like permission of kind, which is kind of interesting. I've run into a lot of people in my lifetime that have needed healing, and it's not so easy to find the correct path to healing. It's different for everybody. The thought of, like, young children, like, like you know, like grade two, three, you're kind of young to know exactly, like, your exact pronouns, your exact sexuality, because you really haven't had that much, like, experience out in the world. And you think, like, oh, I have to figure, like, figure out, but you, re you don't really... You have your whole lifetime for that. The freedom to question is everything. Maybe it's when you go looking for it that you're looking for confidence in yourself. You're looking for a way to be in the world. That's self-assured. You're not going to be right the first time, probably. Like, you don't know that whatever you pick the first time is going to be correct, like me. And it could also change. So to question, like, you think you're this sexuality, and then later on you're like, no, I think I'm something else. And then you like try to figure it out. You know that old expression, seek and you might find? Or is it seek and you will find? <laughs> um, maybe it's luck. I feel lucky. When we treat each other with kindness and respect, and we show tolerance for each other, and we listen to each other, that's the way to move into a more just world. We can really learn to accept and admire and laugh at and embrace each other's differences, each other's similarities and foibles and marvelousness. If you don't understand yourself, then you can't make other people understand you. And you know what? You don't have to like figure yourself out. You don't have to understand yourself. I mean, I don't, you know? <laughs> I would say to the people in the community uh, and the people outside of the community, you know, Try to have a sense of humor. I think sense of humor is something that is being driven out from a, our society because of, you know, social justice issues and people taking them so very seriously. And I understand that they're serious issues, but when you take away humor from the situation, it becomes, it can become, I don't know, dire and dividing, I think. Humor is a very important part of human interaction, and sometimes I think that gets lost.